Hi everyone, uh, my name is Elad and I'm from the Wing team and I want to give you a little introduction to the Wing programming language. The idea behind Wing is that it's a language for, that, that's designed for building cloud applications. And the primary thing about cloud applications that we think is different from traditional software is that cloud applications include both infrastructure and application code. You need both in order to create applications that run on the cloud. Even if your infrastructure is just a bunch of Lambda functions or a bunch of containers, there's always an infrastructure aspect involved in it. And we think that the more you lean on the cloud and the more you use these resources that are amazing, you're able to focus more on your business and on creating value for, you, for your users. And so the idea behind Wing is to merge these two spaces together, the infrastructure and the application code, into a single programming model and reduce a lot of the friction that exists today when you try to marry these two worlds. And so we're just gonna build a really simple application. And through this, I hope to, to be able to show you some of the cool things about Wing. We're super happy to receive feedback. So please reach out to us on the Wing Slack, on GitHub. We have this growing community of people that are really excited about this project. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do, well, let's create a bucket. A bucket is a very simple uh, cloud resource. Uh, it stores files or objects under a certain key. And so you see, I, I created this bucket here. And as soon as I did this on the right-hand side, the Wing console, which is this tool that's built into the Wing stack, automatically showed me this bucket. And I can actually upload files and download files and play with my little bucket. And that was immediate. And the reason uh, that it was immediate is because this program is actually running inside what we call the local cloud simulator. And, and that simulator runs locally in your machine. So you don't need any cloud resources, any accounts, you don't pay anything. It's just super quick. A bucket in this case is basically just a bunch of files on your machine. When I go and I compile this code to AWS, for example, you'll see that I'm going to get a Terraform file over here. And that Terraform file, give me a second, the Terraform file basically has a bucket. Oh, let's see. So it has an S3 bucket. And so basically the, the idea is that you define your infrastructure as part of your application. It's a very natural thing, you just new bucket, which makes total sense. And once you compile it, it compiles to something that you can go and deploy in, in a cloud provider. And Wink already has support for multiple cloud providers. And so you see that we have Terraform AWS, Terraform Azure, Terraform GCP, SIM is this local simulator. And we also have uh, AWS CDK support. And so, which means that you can deploy through CloudFormation. Uh, so Wing has this really powerful concept of decoupling the functionality of the application with the backing implementation. And so in the future, you, you, you will also be able to say, I want this bucket to be deployed on Dropbox, right? Because this is my company's policy, or I want this bucket to be encrypted, or I want this bucket to be uh, HIPAA compliant, or any other customizations that you want to do below the abstraction layer of the application without changing the application. And, and we think that this is a super important part of democratizing the cloud because it enables developers to work at the right level of abstraction without having to care about all the underlying details and the mechanics of how to implement those abstractions. It's not different from me saving a file in Java, right? Like when I save a file in Java, I don't care what operating system I'm using or what file system is backing up those files. I have this abstraction and I work against it. But let's see some more examples. I think that will help. Okay, so now I've got this little bucket, but it's not that interesting. Uh, now let's create another resource. The other resource that I'm gonna create is a function. And a function, the unique thing about a function resource, and there are a bunch of resources in our SDK already that, that are compute resources. So those are cloud resources that execute your code on the cloud. And, and so we have a function and we have a service resource in Wing. And the difference between them is basically how long your code is executing, right? Like the boundary of your code. And so functions, when you compile to AWS, you get AWS Lambda functions or Azure functions or Google functions. And services would go and turn into long running services through containers. So through Fargate and ECS or Kubernetes in the future and et cetera. And so the idea is, again, we're thinking at, at the functional level. And so from a developer's perspective, they don't really care if this is running on Lambda or this is running inside a container. 
but they do care that this is handling an event, right? Like that the lifetime of the code that's executing has some certain boundaries. And so this is a function. And the thing that this accepts is, is what we call an in-flight closure. And so if you look at the in-flight closure syntax, it's going to look really familiar for anyone who comes from JavaScript, for example, beside the fact that it has this modifier called in-flight. And if you had to distill the primary unique thing about Wing, it comes down to this idea of in-flights and pre-flights. And we have actually some really awesome documentation that explains this deeply, but the easiest way to think about it is that pre-flight is infrastructure and in-flight is runtime code. And so when I define something in pre-flight, which is the default phase in Wing, I just define the infrastructure. But when I, when I define something within an in-flight scope, it means that it's going to run on the cloud. And so in this case, it makes total sense, right? Like I define this resource called cloud function. And within that resource, I wrote the code that this resource is executed when the function is invoked. Let's see this in action. Okay, so I'm saving this and I'm going to click here. And then I have this little invoke operation here. So I'm just going to invoke that here. And I got this hello, wonderful hello. It should have been hello world. Let's do it correctly. When I compile this to AWS, let's see, compile to AWS again. And I'm going to go to see the Terraform again. Then this is what I have right now. So now I have my Lambda function. I have the IAM roles that associated with the Lambda function and I have this bucket already. I also have an assets director here, which contains an archive zip file, which contains my code. So let's have my function put an object in the bucket. And the intuitive thing for a developer to do in this case would be to assign this into a variable. I'm just gonna wanna, I wanna interact with this bucket, so I'm gonna put it inside some variable. And then I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna press dot. And when I press dot, I see the API of the bucket. So I can put and list and get and you know interact with my bucket from the in-flight world. Now, it's important to see this, that if I actually go and put dot here, I see the pre-flight API of the bucket. So this API is basically, and you can see the pre-flight modifier here on, on each one of those functions. The pre-flight API of the bucket is how this bucket is connected to the other resources in my application in the infrastructure space. Okay, so now let's put a file in the bucket, okay? And now I'm not gonna make that mistake. I'm gonna call the file hello, let's call it hello.txt and world. Now, as soon as I save this, we see the Wink simulator open, uh, loading immediately. And by the way, I don't have to run any watches, any compilers, any command lines. It's just built in working out of the box. You don't have to touch anything. One of the key principles of this, of our language is what we call batteries included experience, right? Like you just don't have to deal with a tool chain that has 2000 tools and 3000 configuration files and 5000 knobs and dials. Let's run this function now. See hello world, go to the bucket, see hello, see world. Great. Now, one thing that you can notice here is that there's a relationship between bucket and uh, function. And that relationship is interesting because it means that my compiler understands that my function is actually interacting with the bucket. And that's something that in today's tooling, we can't really achieve because today's tooling separates infrastructure and application code. And so when you're focused on infrastructure, you don't see what's running inside your application, right? Like the, if, as far as Terraform is concerned or CDK is concerned, the thing that's inside my Lambda function or inside my container is a black box. It's a zip file, right? And when doing, you don't really need that. If I go to my Terraform again, and that's going to be a really fun experience to show, but uh, let me change this just for a second. And I'm looking at the IAM policy that's produced, that the IAM policy has a S3 put object action permissions on the specific bucket. And so we actually got like automatic IAM permissions for my Lambda function based on the code that's running inside my Lambda function you can actually don't care about IAM policies and you get least privilege IAM policies without caring about them, which is the only reason you, you can not care about IAM policies. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's create some abstractions. So obviously anything interesting in programming is always about creating abstractions. And, and so we wanted to make sure that Wing's model is composable, right? Like that you can actually take these ideas and create reusable components from them. And so let's create uh, 
a class called store and inside the class I'm gonna just store I'm just gonna have my little bucket here and so now I'm gonna create a bucket and now I can specify the in-flight API of my class. So the same way I could interact with objects through their in-flight and pre-flight API, I can also specify the in-flight API when I'm declaring a class. And so now let's just store data or something like that. Keep it super simple. And there we go. We even have uh, Copilot helping us here. And so now I have this store concept, right? Like it's a new thing called store. And now let's delete this and create a store call it my, my store and I'll create a lambda function that will call my store dot store hello world of course now you see a different graph right what we're seeing here is that this idea of the store was carried over to the wing console so I can actually interact with this concept called store from this user experience, which what we're planning to do is we're actually planning to offer this in production as well. The beauty of software is this idea of decomposing your problem as you're defining these classes and these classes depend on other classes and other classes. You have this like huge graph that, that represents your system. And that graph mostly has logical units like storage, ingress, egress, processing system, whatever your system is. And your ability to actually interact with those resources, with those abstract concepts in the operational side of the world, which is what we are seeing on over here, to me is mind blowing because I feel like today's experience with the cloud is very low level, right? Like you're actually interacting with the resources and not with applications. Let's run this function and just make sure that it's working. You've seen how fast this whole thing happened. And I'm not fast forwarding this video. If, you're, if you've been building stuff in the cloud, I think you can appreciate how important your ability to iterate is because the existing experiences are, to me, they're not acceptable. I wanna get feedback as soon as I can. And this is a millisecond level feedback. And the existing experience in the cloud is like, multiple minutes every time I do these types of iterations, unless I change only the code that runs inside my Lambda function, or I, I hot swap some specific thing, and then I have to go to the AWS console and find the logs and figure out what happened. And so the ability to actually get this instant feedback is the number one tenet for building this thing, right? Like is the ability to actually stay in the flow and focus on building your application and not focus on waiting for other systems to deploy your, your code. Okay, just for the sake of it, obviously, now that it's an abstraction, I can create two stores. So let's just do that. Very creative today with the... Okay. And so now you see that I have two of those concepts that's called stores. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is, let's say I want to store my data not only in a bucket, but also in a Redis cluster. Let's say there's some, some data path that needs to access really quickly. So I'm storing in a bucket for like long-term replication, but then also put in the Redis uh, cluster in the region so that anybody can access really quickly, which means that every time I'm, I store something, I just also want to store it inside a Redis cluster. And so the interesting thing is that if I do a new cloud dot something, then there's no Redis here because we didn't include Redis in, in the standard library for Wing, but the beauty of Wing is this is a programming language. And so there's a library story to it. There's an ecosystem story to it. It's still not fully fledged. And so you can't really publish library, Wing libraries yet, but soon you will. We have an example of a bunch of libraries that we created. And so I've, I have this module called the X. And if I look at the module, I have this Redis uh, class in it. And so I'm going to create a Redis class here and I'm going to store it. I'm going to put it in a variable here. And that as soon as I save this, now I have two Redis nodes over here. And if you look here that I can even access the command line of my Redis node, which is pretty cool. I can uh, set something, sorry, set hello world, get hello world. As I said, I'm very creative today. Okay, so now all that is left is basically to do do.set data and data. 
And naturally, once I've done that, that these connections expanded to make sure that this Lambda function, this code that runs these store operations here, actually have access to these resources. We should run this, right? Of course, I'm gonna run this, invoke, and get data. Yeah, let's see that here, get data, hello wing, cool. Thanks so much for your time. Please reach out to us. We're all available on the Wing Slack. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me at any uh, on any medium. I'm happy to talk about cloud programming, CDK, whatever. Thanks so much for your time again, and uh, see you later. Bye.